This week on Healthy Living, World Malaria Day is April 25th every year. We'll see some innovations to combat the disease. Kenya has reduced the prevalence of malaria by 50%. We'll find out how. And a new malaria vaccine has been approved for use in Ghana and Nigeria. Plus, UNICEF says millions of children failed to be vaccinated the past few years. That's in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Kamiti Kibayasi. From the world first malaria vaccine to new tools for victor control, the global fight against malaria is not slowing down. Malaria is a serious, sometimes fetal disease caused by the parasite Plosmodium. The World Health Organization estimates that in 2020, 627,000 people died of the mosquito-borne disease, most of them children in Africa. And millions of people are infected with malaria each year. Observers say innovative solutions are key to making new and significant progress in the ongoing fight against malaria. We start in Kenya, where malaria infection has been reduced by more than 50% in the last decade. As Kenya's Ministry Health announces new strategy to eliminate malaria by 2030, WHO is now calling for increased support for innovation in the fight against the disease and for scaling up implementation to increase effective vaccination. Huba Abdi reports from Nairobi. Kenya is taking significant steps towards the eradication of malaria with the implementation of several efforts targeted at various areas of the country. Head of the Ministry of Health National Malaria Program, Dr. Omar Ahmed Deen, says the number of people suffering from malaria seems to be decreasing. Dr. Ahmed Deen said overall the country has reduced the prevalence of malaria cases by 50 percent in the past 10 years to stand at 6 percent, down from 11 percent in 2010. He, uh Malaria elimination plan. This malaria elimination plan will help us in developing the methods that we will follow to ensure that we have brought malaria down in those counties. The second is the Kenya Malaria Social Behavioral Strategy, which is a method that we will use to ensure that all our people know about malaria and how to protect themselves from malaria. WHO County Representative in Kenya, Dr. Diallo Abdurrahman, says Kenya should increase its support for innovations and in providing new tools in the fight against malaria. The WHO has noted that even though Kenya continues to make progress, there are new challenges. Whether it is all the preventive measures such as insecticide-treated treated nets, we need to make sure that we expand the implementation of those tools that are already working to make sure that there is equity, and there is access especially to the vulnerable population. And in addition to that, the newly innovative uh, uh, tools that are introduced in the fight against malaria. A variety of preventative measures targeting local needs have led to significant progress against malaria, but dwindling resources underscore the need to work more effectively. Aishar Oyono, director of an organization working to eradicate malaria, No Malaria Kenya or NOMAC, says the use of mozi, a mosquito repellent, in the environment will reduce the incidence of effects of malaria. There is another type of mozi called sock and dry. Sock and dry are the ones we put on the clothes that have been used. Because you know that when the clothes come from the factory, you cannot return them to the factory. So we have made sock and dry. You put a small amount in a basin of water, and then you put clothes in there, and then you take it out, and when it dries, it gives people protection to prevent mosquitoes from approaching them. According to USAID, the U.S. government provides $35 million every year for projects aimed at the fight against malaria. Around the lake, the eight counties where the burden remains high because the 
climatic conditions are favorable is where we really need to strengthen our efforts to bring that burden lower. Once we bring that burden lower, you will see that reflected within the country's national prevalence. Kenya says it has taken steps to reduce malaria to 6%. Last month, Kenya celebrated its first step in the use of malaria vaccines. However, the highest burden remains in counties located in the lake region, accounting for 70 percent of malaria cases countrywide. How much of the concern is malaria to you and how do you protect yourself? What local solutions do you know to prevent or treat malaria? Here are some reactions from Nigeria. My concern with uh malaria is that um, it uh, increased mortality rate. Uh, malaria is something that is dangerous which we have to be careful of considering a uh, canoe where we have a lot of uh, drainages that are I mean drain drainages where we have a lot of water stagnant and that can breed mosquito a lot. All my house covered with nets then secondly, if at all there's malaria, sign of malaria, then firstly I take a first, first step to any chemistry near me. So far, the preventive measures is maybe we use mosquito nets and if there's any other, uh, how do I put it now, maybe traditional herbal drugs for it, good and fine. But I think the best is to prevent it, which is the mosquito nets. And I make sure my environment is clean because I discovered dirty environment uh, can harbor mosquito. I'm not uh, drinking a herbal medicine about the malaria because herbal medicine cannot prevent malaria. But catching of malaria disease, I, will, I never want to take traditional medicine. I used to buy English medicine. No, I don't used to herbal medicine. Because I don't know herbal medicine that that cures malaria, I only go to straight to hospital to see doctor. These solutions are not medical advice. Always check with your health care provider to address any health concern. A new malaria vaccine developed by the University of Oxford has been given the green light for use in Ghana and Nigeria. The vaccine provides new hope in the fight against the mosquito-borne disease. The vaccine, known as R21 Matrix M, was developed by scientists at the University of Oxford. It was manufactured by the Serum Institute of India. R21 Matrix M has shown promising results in a preliminary trial involving 450 children. Ghanaian authorities have approved it for children aged 5 to 36 months. This is the age group most at risk for death from malaria. Nigeria followed suit a few days later. Continue to follow up to make sure there aren't any late side effects from, from vaccination and uh, of course to determine how long the vaccine works for. And it might be that after three or four years, another booster dose would be required. Researchers say Oxford's R21 Matrix M vaccine is 77% effective in preventing malaria. However, the WHO has not yet formally recommended the use of this vaccine. Data from an ongoing phase 3 clinical trial involving 4,800 children in Burkina Faso, Kenya, Mali and Tanzania are due to be published in the coming months. In 2021, the WHO recommended another malaria vaccine, RTSS, produced by the British pharmaceutical giant GSK, a recommendation based on the results of a pilot program in three African countries. The pilot countries have vaccinated more than 1,300,000 children since vaccination began and have reported a one-third, almost 30% 30 drop, 30 drop in hospitalizations of children with severe malaria. They've also seen after two years in the areas where the vaccine was piloted an almost 10% reduction in child deaths in the age group that is eligible for the vaccine. The studies show that RTSS is 60% effective, but the protection decreased significantly over time, even with a booster dose. 
R21 Matrix M brings more hope with an over 75% efficacy. Observers say Ghana and Nigeria's approvals are unusual as the results from the final stage clinical trials for the vaccine are still pending. Professor Halidu Tinto is a professor of parasitology and global health scientist with research and one of the principal investigators of the ARA21 vaccine in Burkina Faso. He explains. The R21 vaccine is a derivative of the RTSS vaccine, if you will. It is practically the same protein. And in terms of biotechnology, there have been innovations that have made it possible for R21 to be more immunogenic. It means that it allows the body to better react and produce the necessary antibodies to protect the individual. Unlike RTSS, we demonstrated in clinical trial phase 2 in Burkina Faso that R21 could protect up to 77%, which is enormous. We are in the process of accelerating the registration for this vaccine because we felt that given what we know about RTSS, which is a vaccine similar to R21 and the experience of COVID-19, it may not be necessary to wait until the end of phase 3 before moving forward with the certification of this vaccine. And so far, after a year of monitoring, we will already have an idea and we believe that these results, in addition to those of phase 2, should allow the WHO and the regulators of African countries to move forward, register this vaccine so that people can access it quickly. Why wait for four years or two years of phase 3? Why not go ahead and grant what they call a temporary authorization like we did for COVID-19? And if in the meantime, during phase three, we realize that there are problems, we could revisit it. Ghana and Nigeria have granted approval, and it will not be surprising to see that in the weeks or months to come, other African countries following in their footsteps. I think it is time for Africans to take charge. And we as researchers, along with our counterparts in the Gambia and the United Kingdom, are exploring eventually testing this vaccine on a large scale in adults to see if it can also benefit Africa in general, which additionally could have an impact on transmission globally. So this idea is in the works, and if it all goes well, we will implement it by next year, a clinical trial among adults. It is true that we are very optimistic with this new vaccine, which is effective at more than 75%. But we're still finalizing the trials. And my message to people is, while we wait the deployment of this vaccine on a large scale to continue to use the existing means of prevention, which are the mosquito nets, seasonal prevention measures, and all the steps that are recommended by our ministries of health. Africa Vaccination Week and World Immunization Week are held the last week of April each year to raise awareness and promote vaccination against vaccine-preventable diseases. This year's theme, The Big Catch-Up, aims to reach kids who miss the vaccination and strengthen routine immunization programs. New report released by UNICEF reveals that 67 million children across the world missed out on either some or all routine vaccinations between 2019 and 2021. Countries in Africa and South Asia have the highest number of under-vaccinated kids and those with zero doses. The total in West and Central Africa came to 6.8 million children. Service, disruption due to COVID-19, conflict, and vaccine hesitancy are partly to blame. The report urges governments to take action, including urgently reaching children who missed vaccination during COVID-19, as well as prioritizing funding to immunization services and innovation. That's our show for today. For more health news, wellness tips and medical breakthroughs stay connected to voice of america at voaafrica.com you can follow me on twitter at mkamiti voa until next time stay well and strive to make it every day a healthy day